Well, hello, Whiskey Neighbors. John, your Whiskey Neighbor here, and today I've got a great treat. I wanna to talk to you about Lot 40 Cask Strength Rye. Uh, this one is the 2018 release. It's the 11 year old, and I'll give you my thoughts after the break. Well, thanks for staying with me. Um, you know, I've talked about this a little bit already. I've actually made some 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 small comments and some some. Uh, I picked it as my rye last year, uh, so I think you know where I'm headed. This is going to be a great rye, but um, this is my chance to to talk to you a little bit more in depth, kind of a, a bit more of a review of what I'm smelling and tasting in this uh, beautiful release. For those of you that don't know. Um, uh, I was gonna say Corby, Corby owns them. Hiram Walker is the distillery, Corby Group owns them. Um, put out, boy, a few years back now, a Northern Border Collection, and that has Lot 40 Rye, uh, Pike Creek uh, Whiskey, um, J.P. Weiser Whiskey, and Gooderham and Warts. Um, and the Gooderham and Warts, the regular is a four grain. Uh, Pike Creek is uh, a 10 year old finished in rum barrels, and the J.P. Weiser, like, uh, I don't know, they have lots of different whiskeys, so I'm not sure which is the one in there. But we think of those four when we think of Northern Border Collection. And then in, uh, in 2017, they created this rare release, which was four special releases, one in each of those categories. And that was uh, that one there, that's the Lot 40, the first cask strength ever. And then last year, so 2018, they did it all again. Uh, they did a Pike Creek 21 year old, a Lot 40 11 year old, uh, the JP Weiser 35 year old, a Gooderham and Warts last year, like the 2018 was 11 souls, uh, which has a huge history. One day I want to share that. This is about the rye. So um, Lot 40 is 100% rye. This particular bottle, gorgeous bottle, nice glass with this piece of copper that's glued on, you can pull it off. Still have a good bottle, have an interesting uh, copper badge. Um, this one is 100% rye. It's aged 11 years in uh, new charred American oak. Um, this is bottle, uh, I think they made a total of 4,020 and it has a, its unique bottle number. And it's released at 58.4%. It's a couple of percent higher than last year's, I think. Um, a little bit about how they, they make this. I, I heard, and this is total credit to uh, Mark Bylock, uh, who runs a whiskey podcast. Uh, he's often on there with Jamie. Um, but he interviewed Dr. Don Livermore, a master blender, uh, who is, um, I think, really the mind behind a lot of these new releases. Um, and he talks about how the way uh, they get their rye um, is, it's 100%. Uh, this must be unmalted, I'm, I'm guessing. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, because I've got some Lot 40 that has a little bit of 5% malted in there. I know the current green label is 100% unmalted and they use enzymes to open it up. I actually don't know right now in this mindset whether this has any malted, but I, I really think it's 100% unmalted rye. They use enzymes to open it up. And then they distill it through a column still, which, uh, you know, Don Livermore uh, talks about how they can, if they don't run it too high, like I know if you run your comb still forever, um, you know, you run it up and you can keep all of the flavors with it and get a lot of copper contact and get rid of sulfur notes. And then they take all of that distillate and they let it chill down and then they um, start a copper um, pot still, right? Like like a, a scotch, you might see those big beautiful stills, right? They, they use a, a, a copper pot still and in, in doing a pot still they can really um, when it starts to uh, distill the, the top part I believe the heads I can't remember what the flavor he associated with that but they don't keep that um, and then they keep the center cut which has your your fruit and your grain flavors the things that you want to keep 
then they don't keep the tails, which I think that was the soapy notes. So it allows them to change the flavor profile or, or select what they really want to keep out of the rye instead of just, you know, everything runs up and everything runs up and that kind of thing. So anyways, I, a thousand percent uh, kudos to, to Mark for that interview. I love listening to it. I love listening to your podcast, Mark. Uh, and I love listening to Dr. Don Livermore kind of talk about uh, building the flavors. So come back down to earth, John, uh, and talk about uh, cask 40. As you know, I like rye um, and we'll see what this one smells and tastes like. So at 40, 40, 58 and a bit percent, it's a rich nose. Yeah, there's alcohol in it. But for me, ah, quickly, caramel, fruit, spice on the back end of that, whether that's um, spice from maybe rye, but even just a little bit of a little bit of peppery, a little bit of cinnamon. Not as much fruit as I was expecting. But nice caramel, a little bit of floral note. Somewhat juicy. And there was a little more alcohol, but a good nose. An exciting nose, spicy, uh, baked full of goodness nose. Uh, let's taste it. Mm. A palate comes alive for me with the 2018 11 year old release. It is at once um, juicy, flavorful, it doesn't take long for oak to make itself known. Um, there's some spice in there. Oh, and the baking spices build up with a bit of that early finish. A little drying. Um, I'm not getting, sometimes in rise, you know, I'm gonna get, uh, um, um, like a dill or a hay or a fresh grass. And maybe there's some in there, but not as much as I was expecting. This tends to be a spicy, bold, oaky, uh, but full of caramel and, and notes that you could even find in some other um, uh, corn whiskeys. Now, this is 100% rye, but... And there is a bit of a hug and the burn builds up in the tongue. Not, not burn, like a negative burn. It's a strength burn. So this is the full experience. It's strong, it's bold, it's tasty. Um, I think it's fairly well balanced between the different things I've been trying to explain. It does, if I drink a little bit of it, tend to build up a little bit of a bitterness um, in the back of my tongue. A little bit of, um, like whether that's a wood bitterness or, or something. I'm not sure, but it does build up a little bit with time. Mm. And while there's a fullness in the flavor, coating, rich, lovely whiskey. It's a lovely whiskey. There's something a little bit missing that I wouldn't actually think was missing if I hadn't had the previous years. So if I'm rating this, um, this is gorgeous, lovely, fantastic, amazing. I don't know what the descriptors are. This is really, really good rye. Um, it is bold. It is cask strength. It can build up and be bitter. You might want to try it with a bit of water. It does open up. I like it, the way it feels in the mouth and the flavor is just the way it comes, even though 58 is pretty strong. But for me, it's not quite a five star, which I know is sacrilege to my fellow Canadians. And I did pick it as my favorite rye. And it was and is the favorite rye that I tried for the first time last year. But it's not my favorite rye in the world. It's missing a little bit of something. So that's why I feel in the 11 year old. Let's come over and see what I can taste today, because my memory is screaming at me, about the first cask release. So this was 2017. Um, they made about the same number of bottles. It's only 55%, but it's 12 years, one year older. And I want to give you my thoughts on the 12 year old 2017, just in comparison to this great rye. Now, 
Nose is similar, but right away I'm getting almost like the skin of a cherry or something that's dark and fruity, but, or leathery. Then you take that dark fruit and then you wrap it in that cooked bake, baked, um, you know, cracked caramel or Macintosh toffee or something that's cooked down. I'm getting a little less spice than my memory would tell me. So taste. Mm. Juicy, fruity. I can get more of that herbal grass in there a little bit. Yeah, especially in the early, early part of the finish. Possibly less wood, which is strange because it's in there 12 instead of 11. No, there are more of the chars coming. Red apple, crisp apple. Um, again, that, that edge of a fruit cooked in something cracked. Cracked. If you've ever made candy, it's a way of describing how, how um, hard you cook the sugars. Thank my wife for that. Um, yeah, so... I should be clearing my palate with um, some water. I didn't pour it for me. This, even that 58, feels a little lighter in the nose, a little less deep. Possibly a little more pepper or cinnamon. And a really nice tasting rye. Um, I... So, I'm, I'm struggling with words, although I've, I've centered a little bit in my mind around the fruit part. Um, I'm not sure if that's it. Yeah, spicier for sure on that one. But for me, I just like, I don't know if it's the way the flavors are coming together, a little more of that herbal note, a little more of the fruit, a little more of the, I don't know, almost rye flavors. I don't know what to say. For the money, if I saw both of them on the shelf, I'd go for the 12 year old. I just like it more. Oh, and there's some of the pepper came back and the spices, so it's got it too. I just like the 12 year old better. It's just a, a juicier, more flavorful. I just enjoy drinking it a bit more then the 11 year old, the 11 year old's a great rye. It's a fantastic rye, but not as much fruit for me, not as much cherry, red apple, and, and also at the same time, not as much fruit, but also at the same time, not as much rye note and grassy note. I've taken a, like a long time because I wanted to, to love this one even more. Of course, every year you want it to be better, but for me, um, I would hope I could pick these out in a lineup, even though I would know I don't know if I'd know they were a lot 40. I would know them as both rise. They got that spice, got that hug. Um, you know, they got that drying, clean finish. Um, but I think this 12 year old is just juicier, more fruit and just um, more delicious. If I were to reach for one or the other and I'm just going for taste, I'm gonna go for this one. So that's my thoughts. I, I waited quite a while to share them because I, I was hoping this would get better. and. And it is good. For me, it's just not quite as good as the 12 year old. Let's hope 2019. Uh, I've heard they're gonna come out with 12 year old again. I don't think it's an age thing, but I'm hoping that the release uh, gets closer to this ballpark. Thanks for joining me so much. Uh, I haven't asked this in a while, but if you're enjoying the videos and you haven't subscribed, please do. I really like building the community here. You guys, take care.